Hello, this is Quick Skills, and today I'm going to be showing you a step by step beginner's guide to how to play my favorite casino game, Craps. A lot of new players avoid this at the casino because it looks intimidating and maybe very crowded when you go to the craps table. Not a good time to ask questions. But in this video, I'll show you some of the bets that I make when I go to the craps uh, table. So that way, you can make your first bet the next time you're at a casino. First things first, you're going to want to approach a table and look for a spot between two players. And so let's just assume that you walked up to the table and this is what you see. Now on this screen, we're on just the left half of the table. If we look this way, you will see that the table is mirrored on the right side with the numbers going from 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10 going towards the right end of the table. And just like you see this rail here, you're going to see a rail off off this picture on the right side. We call that the right side of the table. We're on the left side of the table. The other thing you might notice is you'll see a dealer standing right along the center of the left table. You'll see another dealer here uh, over the middle of the table. And then on the right half of the table, you'll see another dealer not shown on this screen. And so if we approach the table and we're on the left, left half of the table, just like we are here, that person on the left side of the table is going to be your dealer. This is the one you're going to interact with the most when making bets. The next thing you're going to want to look for is where this hockey puck is. If it is off, that is where we want to be to make our first bet. Or you might see it over here and it might say on. And if it does, we're, we're going to just try to change up our chip, uh, uh, cash out our money into chips and wait for that hockey puck to say off. Now, whenever someone rolls the dice, we're going to wait for the dealer to do whatever he's doing with the, with the dice, and we're going to try to make eye contact with the dealer. As soon as you make eye contact with the dealer, you're going to want to set out your money in front of you just like that, and they're going to give you change. Do not throw your money on the table, especially if you see somebody with dice in their hands. That's, a, that's someone that's going to shoot the dice, and we do not want to interfere with that roll. So that's table etiquette number one, is knowing how to change out your chips and just waiting between the rolls to make that change. So now let's assume that we got our chips. You're going to set them down right in front of you, and conveniently enough at the crepes table, they have these indentations that are perfectly fitted to hold your chips right there in front of you. Now let's assume that the dice have been rolled, and this is now on the off position. What we're going to do is we're going to make our first bet at the table. This is called the pass line. And what we're doing is we're betting that on the first roll, a 7 or 11 will hit, and if it does, we instantly win an additional 25, so we'll get 50 back. Or if a 2, a 3, or a 12 roll, we instantly lose our $25 bet. If any of these numbers come out, then that is called the point, and we'll need to hit that number before the next 7 is rolled. And while that may sound confusing or a lot to remember, the dealer that's in front of you is tracking that bet for you. So even if you forget the rules and you win, they're going to set that money down in front of you. Even if you forget and if you lose, they're just going to grab your chips and take them. So don't worry. If you put this bet down and you forget the exact rules on how to play, you will still win or lose as you're intended to. So now let's go ahead and roll our dice. And now remember, on a 7 or 11, we win instantly. We rolled a 9. So we did not lose. We did not win. But instead, now we're playing a game where we need to hit a 9 before the next 7 is rolled. And so if a 7 comes, we're going to lose our $25 bet. And if a 9 comes, we're going to win our bet. And so let's just assume that the dice roller is rolling, and we're going to wait until we roll a 9. Now, a 4 hit... Nothing happened, but you might see people putting bets all across the table. We're going to explain some of those bets in just a second, but let's just keep rolling here. So we rolled an 8. There's a 6. And this may seem boring to you, nothing happening, but remember, during this time, you're going to be getting you know, cocktail drinks, socializing with the people around you. People are winning and losing money on every one of these bets once you learn all the side bets, and we'll explain this. But let's just assume you're just playing the pass line for your first bet, which is not a bad bet at the casino, at the, at sitting down at the craps table. And this occurrence of rolls might take the span of 
two to three minutes, sometimes even five to ten minutes long. This will go on as long as it needs to until a nine or a seven is rolled. So don't feel like you're doing something wrong if you see somebody roll the dice, roll the dice, roll the dice, and your money's not moving. This is perfectly normal at the craps table. And in just a second, you're going to understand why. But you want to roll the dice as long as possible because you will be helping people win money the more and more rolls that you roll before hitting a seven. And this is a really good roll um, because you want to you wanna see a continual amount of rolls just like this. And so here we go. Something happened. We rolled a seven and we just lost our first bet at the, at the craps table. But that's okay. So you can see the $25 went to the dealer and we lost $25 here. And so to repeat the bet, we're just going to put down another $25 on the pass line. And we're going to roll. We need a 7 or 11 to hit. We did it. We got a 5. So now we need a 5 before a 7. Unlike the 9, a 9 now will do nothing. It Only the 5 is going to trigger something. And here is something that I'm going to teach y'all. You can bet odds. And so when you win on this bet of, of 5, you're going to get $25 back. However, it is much harder to roll a five than it is a seven. And we're getting even money and that we're not getting extra money for the difficulty it is to roll the five over the seven. Now, without going into the specific math on it, just understand that if we put any amount of money behind our pass line bet, some tables allow five times the minimum bet or whatever bet you put on the pass line. Some places allow 10 times the amount of money. But the more money you put down behind your pass line bet, this amount of money is not just going to pay $100, but it's going to pay that plus the odds, which, you know, I think it's not quite two to one on your money. The four and the 10 are two to one on your money, but it's going to be somewhere between two to one and one to one on your money. And so if we put $100 down here, we might get $150 back. Uh, just Right, yeah, quickly explaining that to you. So that is why you might see somebody put down an additional bet behind their pass line bet. And so I'm hoping now I roll a five before a seven so I can show you. Okay, did not happen. We rolled another seven. So we lost $125 there. And now we're ready to roll again. And so now we need a six before a, a seven. And a six is a lot easier to hit than a five. So now we're going to hope that we get the six and we're going to put additional money down on the pass line. And so I am using, oh, so here we go. Perfect example. So we had $25 here on the pass line plus an additional $100 on the odds. Now we have $125 on the table. We should be getting $250 back. But because we bet the odds, we won 270, giving us an additional $20. So that extra $20 is the premium that we get for betting the odds. If we had just bet $25, we would have won $50 and we didn't get any additional money for the difficulty that it was to row a six over a seven. So again, without having to go into the math of it, just know that if you bet the pass line and then add the odds bet after the point is set, you have the ability to win more money than just one-to-one -one odds on your bet. And the dealer will do the math for you, so don't overthink it. Just know that if you want to be more efficient at playing, you should always be betting the odds because it will give you more money in return when you hit. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to explain the don't pass bet. Now, this is a, a, a bet that has just about as good of odds as the pass line bet, but people don't like to do it because you're actively rooting for the majority of people to lose their bet. And I'll explain in just a second. And so normally we want to see a 7 or 11 to hit so that we all win, or we want to see a 2, a 12, or a, a 2, a 3, or a 12 not hit so that nobody loses. Well, on the don't pass bar, we're basically playing the opposite game. So when the dice are rolled now, a two, a 12, or a, a two or a three will win. A 12 is actually not going to, is not going to pay out. And so let's go ahead and roll the dice here. So now we want a seven before the nine. And it is a lot easier to roll a seven than it is a nine. And so on this don't pass bar, 
we're going to be rooting for a 7 while everybody else is rooting for a 9. And so there is an 11. Let's go 7. There's a 6. There it is. There's the 7. So you can see our $25 gave us $50. And so the edge is actually a little bit more in your favor on the don't pass bar, but it's not enough to where people are constantly playing it. A lot of people are going to play the pass line bar. So at a crowded table, if you're betting the don't pass bar, you might not be, you may be the black sheep of the table, but it's your money to win or lose. So do whatever you feel like. Don't worry about what the table uh, is opinion of you is but maybe hold your cheering down to a minimum when you win on the don't pass bet so now we're going to start another point and i'm going to show you the other bets at the table and so we hit an 11 we instantly won our 25 dollars we're going to roll again start another bet and now comes the eight so this we're going to bet the odds on the eight and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my favorite bet at the craps table, but the one with admittedly one of the worst odds. So don't bet this one if you're an edge player. Never bet the field if you want the best odds. But I like this bet because it's done in over one roll. So sometimes if you're on a losing streak, you can throw a big bet on the field and maybe win some money back or lose it just as quickly. But what you're betting on is that any one of these numbers pictured on the field bet will be rolled on the very next roll. So we need a 2, a 3, a 4, a 9, a 10, 11, or a 12 on the very next roll to win our money. And you will also notice that here it says pays double or pays triple. Each craps table is going to pay a bonus if a 2 or a 12 is rolled out. So pay attention to what that bonus is. But basically, if you throw $100 on the field bet and, it, and a 2 comes out, you're going to win $300 back for the 2 and $400 back for the 12. Any of these other numbers you're, that hit, you're just going to get $100 back. Now the numbers missing are 5, 6, 7, 8... And while that may seem like you have a better chance of hitting your numbers, the truth is the 5, the 6, the 7, and the 8 are the most common numbers to roll. And there's actually more odds that those numbers will come out on any given roll than the other numbers on this field bet. But let's go ahead and roll the dice and see what we get. And remember, it's over on the first roll. And so 6, 7, 8, we hit on our 8 bet and we won our odds, but we lost our field bet. So we lost our 100 here, but we won $270 here. So we lost our field bet, but let's go ahead and put our pass line bet. And now that we've made a few rolls at the table, some the dealer is now sliding dice to you and telling you um, it is now your turn to roll. And so this guy in front of you is going to have the stick, and in front of you are going to be the dice. And there's gonna, usually going to be like six dice. Don't grab all of them. Just reach for two. Once you do, they're going to slide all the other dice out of the way. And what you want to do is when you hold the dice, you always want to hold it with one hand. If you put both hands on top of the dice, they're going to remind you that you're not allowed to do that. You also want to make sure that the dice don't leave over the table. So if you walk away from the table with the dice, they're also going to tell you not to do that. So make sure that your, your hand is always over the table at some point. And... Um, you can manipulate the dice. Some people like to blow on the dice, kiss the dice, whatever. But what you're going to do is you're always going to want to throw to the opposite side of the table. And so when you take your dice, you might be standing here on this, on this half of the table, or you might be standing all the way on the back end of the table. Wherever you are, the dice have to go all the way across to the middle of the table and hit the back rail of the opposite side of the table. Now, sometimes rollers will throw the dice and they'll bounce off the table. If that happens, you will have to re-roll. Sometimes they'll even give you the option of keeping the dice that you rolled with. So if one falls off the table, you can get that same dice back if you feel like that one is lucky. Now, let's just assume that you're the dealer now, you or you're the roller, you have the dice, and you roll the dice. The game is going to play exactly the same. The only difference is, is that you're going to be the one in control of the next roll. Uh, and, and you you won't have to wait for somebody to roll the dice. You're going to be rolling the dice for everybody. And this is where the game gets very exciting because you're going to be able to help people win some money when rolling the dice. And what I have not explained yet are some of the side bets you're going to see that are placed very commonly. So now we need an 8 before the 7. And we're going to make our odds bet here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make these side bets. 
And these side bets here, you can buy or place your bet on these numbers. The dealer is going to tell you what's the best way to do it, but many people will buy, uh, place their bet on the set five, the six, and the nine and they're going to buy the four and the 10. Just know that the odds work a little bit differently, whether you wanna buy or place, but the mechanics are identical on what we're hoping for. And so let's just assume that we wanna buy the four. We roll the dice, and if a four comes before the seven, which it didn't, we will win $50 right here, just like the eight. Now, what some people will do is they will cover up all the numbers. So now any number that is rolled besides a seven is typically gonna pay out some money. So here we see that the five hit and we won $60 on our $25 bet. So a little bit more than uh, double our money. We're gonna, and usually at the casino, they'll leave that money there for you. Uh, they'll ask you if you wanna take it off, but in this game, they're taking it off for me, but uh, in real life, your money will sit there and they'll just give you that extra, uh, what is that, uh, 30, 30 something dollars. They're gonna give that to you directly and the 25 will just sit there at the table. So now we're gonna roll again. And so again, you can see here, we had $25. We had $25 on the 10. And now we are winning $72.50. So that's some really good money on the 10 here. We're going to put our bet back on the 10 and roll again. So the six hit. And this is where I was explaining that having these rolls, even if they're not a 7 or 11, are exciting because of all these side bets. And so you can see the nine hit. So now we're just winning money every time a dice is rolled and a seven doesn't hit, or the eight doesn't hit, it doesn't matter, we're winning money on the four, the five, the six, the nine, or the 10. Now, what is not shown here and can happen is right after the dice are rolled, a seven can come just as quickly and you lose all the money on the table. But you can see here, that five just keeps coming and we're okay with that because we have money on the five. And man, this is, this is, this is what you're hoping for as a craps player. And especially remember in this scenario, we have the dice, so it's exciting. We're making everybody money. And finally, a seven came. So let's see what happened there. We just lost 25, 50, uh, 75, 100, 125, $150 because we had money basically on all the numbers there. That eight was basically a pass line bet. We lost $150 plus whatever money we had in odds. But hopefully in between all those other rolls and I wasn't tracking it, all those fives that hit, the nine that hit, the 10 that hit, the six that hit, we won enough of our money back that we covered all those bets and then some. So I think we were ahead in that, in that matchup there. But that is the exciting part. Now, unfortunately, since you rolled a seven, the dice are going to be passed off to somebody else. And now we're going to go to the pass line again. And we are going to now learn a new bet. And so we roll the dice. So now the point is set to six. So we need a six before the seven. And now we've learned the field bet. Basically, if any of these numbers hit, we win. We learned how to bet these numbers here. Next thing we're going to learn are the hard ways. So if a six comes and we look right here and it's a three and a three, then you win nine to one on your money. But there's a four and a two that could hit. There's a five and a one that could hit. And that would mean you would lose your money. And so we're going to ask the dealer and we're going to put five dollars on six the hard way. Now you may be wondering how can you put five when the table minimum is 25. Well, since you already have a bet on the pass line, the table minimum doesn't apply to you because your bet now is $30, not $25. So you're over the table minimum. And what we're betting now is that you can get a six the hard way versus the next seven. And to, to kind of speed things up, let's go ahead and bet all of the hard ways. So that way we can see if any of them get rolled. But typically someone might just bet, oh, 
that's an ad, might bet there that, um, they, they may bet that um, just one number will hit. And actually, I'm glad I did that because if we look, we rolled a 10 the hard way. So that $25 or that $5 bet won 7 to 1 of our money. So 5 times 7 is 40. So on our $5 bet, we won $40 for rolling a 10 and it being a 5 and a 5 and not the uh, 6 and the 4 uh, that's needed. Now we're going to roll again. An 11, and you can see the bet's off there. So if, if a, a 10 the hard way hits, we lose. And if you look again, we just hit 6 the hard way. So our $5 bet just won us $45. This says 100, but that's because we had $25 on the pass line. And so these bets here are going to be off when this is off. And so if we roll an 8 the hard way or a 4 the hard way, um, and nothing is going to happen, or if a seven is rolled, nothing is going to happen. So let's go ahead and roll. And I didn't actually put a bet on the pass line, which is a good mistake to make because I want to show you another bet at the table that you can make. And so now we're still waiting for one of these the hard way or a seven to hit for something to happen with those there. And because I don't have a bet on the pass line, I do want to get in on the table action. I can throw $25 on the come bet. Now the dealer is going to track this for you, but once you put the 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 twenty five dollars on the come bet, you're basically starting your own very own pass line that you're able to use, and um, and based on the outcome of the dice, we'll see where the come bet is. And so we're going to roll, and it looks like we rolled an eight, and it if we look over here. It was not the hard way, so that $5 bet went away. And our $25 bet moved from the come over to the 8. And now, just like the dice roller needs a 5 before the 7, we need an 8 before the next 7 is rolled. And so let's go ahead and roll. And here you can see our last hard ways bet just went off. And we rolled an easy four. You'll hear the dealer say easy four. Uh, so that bet was gone. So we won on these two here and we lost on those two. And that's actually not a bad outcome. And so um, what we're betting for on this table here is that we will get a 10 before the seven. And I don't know how I put this $25 here. I think that was an accident. So let's go ahead and clear that bet. Now we're going to roll. So we're just waiting for us eight before the seven. So since the seven hit, we lost that bet. That bet went to the dealer. And so we're going to bet the pass line. We're going to roll. So here we go. We have a six before the seven. We're going to bet the come. We're going to roll. And we need an eight before the seven. What's funny here is that this bet is actually like the big six and the big eight. Now, as a dice roller, I will tell you, avoid this. It's just much easier to play the come or the pass line. But the odds on these hitting that they pay out are not as good as what you can bet on the pass line or on your come bet. So go ahead and avoid this bet altogether. But if you wanted to bet this, basically what you're saying is that a six or an eight will hit before the seven, and you could just bet once on the six or once on the eight. But if you put both here like that, you're betting on both the six or the eight, which matches this here. And so if this hits, we're going to win uh, $200 for, for uh, both the six and the eight coming out before the next seven. And so let's roll these dice just to show you what I mean here. I'm hoping for a six or an eight. And there is a seven, so all that money is gone. Now, what I'm going to show you next is we're going to play the don't pass. So remember, we want a two or a three to hit. Okay, a five hit. So now we want a seven before a five. You can now bet the don't come. And basically what you're saying is, is that if the next roll 
Let's see what the row is. A three, so we just instantly won. So we need a seven before the next five or four hit for us to win some money. And so now we're rooting for the seven. It's so much easier to roll a seven. Oh, I don't know why that keeps popping up. And so here you can see we have a seven and our don't pass bar hit and our don't come bar hit. We want $100 off of our $50 bet. Again, the math to it. Try not to get worried about the math. The dealer's going to make track all of your winnings for you and slide you the money that you are uh, supposed to make. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the last few side bets on the table. These are just one-time hits, just like the field bet, but most people will put just a dollar on them because they're very hard to hit. And that's going to be these here. And so what we're betting on any given dice roll is for one of these outcomes to happen. And you can see the pattern on the dice look exactly the same. And actually, let's undo that last one. Um, so we need a 3, a 2, a, six, a 12, or an 11 to hit. The odds on all of those dice are printed right there. So for a 3 to hit, we win 15 to 1 on our money. A 2 to hit, we'll hit 30 to 1 on our money. 12 to hit will win 30 to 1 our money, and 11 to hit is 15 to 1 our, our money. And so you might see a dollar on snake eyes. They call the 11 the yo. Uh, train cars is the 12. So you'll hear those nicknames. But you can also just say, I want a dollar on two, dollar on 12. But if you hear train cars, yo, uh, snake eyes, that's what they're referring to, or craps for three. We're going to roll. Now, if any of those hit, so it was a nine, none of those hit, all those dollar bills are gone. Some people might just throw a five on the 12, that's a big bet, because that's gonna win 30 to one, and we hit an 11, so we would have won 15 to one if we would have had it on the 11 and not the 12, but that's life. You're never gonna be perfect on there. And so we lost all of our side bets, and I think we won on our nine. Uh, the last bet here is gonna be this one here. And so if you were to say any craps, you win seven to one on your money. So rather than taking the time to put $1 bets on every single one of them, you could just toss a five here and they're going to put it where it says seven to one on any crap. So we roll the dice. There we go. The 11 hit. And so our money that we had here just got paid out. We won $32 on our $1 bet. Uh, and we had any craps, so we won uh, seven to one on our money there. Uh, oh no, we didn't win on the craps because the craps is just three, two, and 12. Uh, what we won was on this one here. This $1 bet puts a dollar on the yo. For some reason, this has its own category of just betting the 11. That's what the E stands for, 11, and the C stands for craps. Well, that covers every bet on the craps table. You should not have any need for any other explanation of any bet. We have the pass line, don't pass, field bet, come bet, don't come bet, and how to bet each individual numbers. Just know that the odds are going to be the best if you bet the pass line and you add your odds bet below it. So a lot of people will put the table minimum on the pass line and then bet as much as they're comfortable betting under the pass line because you'll win more when you are ready to uh, win. Well, good luck to y'all out there. Let me know if y'all win some money when you play craps. If you have any other questions, just leave me a comment here on the video and I'll see if I can get back to you. But this is a very easy game to play and I look forward to hearing your results the next time you go to a casino.